Parents post videos wondering what is going on with their babies and screens. Baby after baby seems completely transfixed. You might even ask, would kids rather be looking at the screen than looking at their parents or their caregivers? We don't know. The screens are light. They're attractive. They're meant to be digital candy. Kathy hirsch Pasek is director of Temple University's Infant Language Lab. Next to her, researcher Tracy dennis Tiwari, professor of psychology at Hunter College, and both are also moms. It takes a little bit of the human out of our interactions. We wanted to know what kind of scientific evidence is there about the impact of mobile screens on a baby's brain. Experts tell us research is underway, but tonight it's largely uncharted territory. What we know is that younger infants can only see clearly within a few feet from their face. So what is happening as babies grow up and are handed something so intense? The way our species is designed to learn is through this back and forth and back and forth interaction. And we do a whole lot in our world today to try to cut that, to try to take the human out. Whether it's sitting our kids in front of devices for long periods of time, or whether it's interrupting those conversations by pulling out our own devices. So experts decided to create an experiment which these two researchers are helping us replicate. A mom comes into a laboratory. She's asked to scroll and type and focus on her screen just for two minutes. The videotape showing something maybe adults don't see when we're home alone. This is not about parent guilting because parents feel so torn oh, and sometimes we have to get things done. This is two and a half year old Jensen. I think he's about to suss out that she's on the device. It takes just 15 seconds for Jensen to start his campaign to get mom Melissa to look up from that screen. We have some other things we do, mommy. We have some other things to do, mommy. And he, he just walks again. away. Yeah. She has been asked by researchers to do something very difficult for her. Keep looking down. And remember, just two minutes. Come on, Mommy. He repeats the plea seven times. We have a normal thing to do, Mommy. Mommy! You go, not listen to me, Mommy. Listen to me, Mommy. And here is another fact about grown-ups and phones. On average, we unlock our phones 80 times a day. So let's not deceive ourselves into believing that children don't notice. Cell phones, I think, are qualitatively different than other forms of distraction because they're with us all the time. They're ubiquitous. They have been engineered to grab our attention. In the old day, phones were chained to the wall, but today a child sees our heads go down, our eyes rivet on something or someone else. They see it as an intruder, as an interloper. I think they see the way that it takes their parent away from them. Back at the experiment, which includes a number of moms and some dads, watch as these kids actually try to insert themselves between the screen and their parents' eyes. They even get creative. Again, these parents are asked to stay on their phones for just two minutes. We see a little girl try to woo her mother with affection. Mama. This little girl seems reluctant to resume the game after her mom puts down the phone. Well, let's keep building. I don't want to. You don't want to? This is actually the crucial part of the experiment, the reunion period. But kids are usually able to bring back a lot of positive emotion. They're able to re-engage with their parents. Then we ask again, haven't distractions like these always been happening? Parents doing chores, watching TV, the doorbell? The children and the adult both look over to the doorbell, then they both come back, and that stream of the back and forth is preserved. What you have is that little sneak down. You've all noticed it at dinner conversations. And basically it means, I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm pretending to talk to you. And no one can be sure how long before your eyes look up again. This is little Hunter, who seemed to have learned when she has to compete with the phone, she might as well just give up. She's sitting down and she's waiting. 
She knows her mother is not available right now. When it was over... Jensie, come here. Get a hug. Jensen's mom said it was a revelation. I was actually really surprised at his reaction. So did this mom. I think you don't realize when you're at home in your own environment. I think I'll pay attention more now to not pick my phone up. But remember, most of us live in a house with a lot of screens. Hello. Hello. We've talked before about secondhand smoke. And now, throughout our environment, we have secondhand screens. So tonight, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that kids under the age of two should avoid screens entirely, with the occasional exception of a few minutes of FaceTime with family. I love you. And there are studies showing that children seem more engaged with a story if a parent is reading from an ordinary book than if they're reading from a screen. I do not like that Sam I am. Eyes that can keep looking up at each other. Is that your sister? In three dimensions. Count my fingers. One, two, three, four, five. Children notice the grass. A picnic? And they notice the butterfly. <laughs> and the children even notice the ants that are going in a straight line and are so exciting. I really don't want to be guilt tripping parents. Um, with the study or the implications. But I do want this study to be a wake-up call, that face-to-face -face time we have with our children is not just the icing on the cake, it is the cake. It is the place that children learn the most about the world and about themselves. I love you. 